Here's the deal. When it comes to colonizing the solar system, most of the time you, all you hear is Mars. Mars here, Mars there. It has a strong place in popular culture, in movies, books, games, etc. Pretty much every one of them sees Mars as the next outpost of humanity. It gets even worse with Elon Musk, who is clearly overfixated on reaching Mars and establishing a human colony there. Which is great, and I'm all for it, but at the same time we might be missing on another great opportunity. So can colonizing Venus instead of Mars can be a better option? Well, let's figure this out. A lot of you might be thinking something along the lines like, man, what are you talking about? Venus is literally hell. Surface temperature is high enough to melt lead, exaggerating atmospheric pressure and acid rays on top of that. How are we supposed to colonize a place we can't even go to? And you know what? You're absolutely 100% correct. Venus is indeed the hottest planet in our solar system, even hotter than Mercury, despite it being closer to the Sun. Indeed, Venus has very tough surface conditions that will destroy any human-made probes in hours. Atmospheric pressure is about 90 bar, which is roughly equivalent to being one kilometer deep underwater. But, hear me out, all this is true only when you're talking about the surface of the planet. And I know that we all love surfaces, after all we are used to live on one, but you don't need to be surface-centric all the time. If you put this notion aside for a while, who says you actually need a surface? So if you go to Venus and rise about 50 kilometers up, the conditions start to look much better. Temperature is about 70 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot but bearable with the technology we have, atmospheric pressure is about one bar, just like on Earth, no acidic rains, and composition of air is much better for humans. Yes, uh, the winds up there can be a challenge, but it looks like a manageable one compared to all the other problems. So once we establish that you can actually physically exist on Venus, let's have a look at the advantages it brings. First of all, flight windows to Venus appear every 584 days, which is more often than 780 days for Mars. It means you can fly there more frequently, deliver more stuff, and establish a more reliable infrastructure between the planets. The fact that Venus is closer to the Sun also means that more solar energy is available per square meter, about four times more than on Mars. This might be quite important for generating power later on, unless, of course, we master fusion by that time. And now about the atmosphere. Indeed, it's toxic and super dense, it's almost entirely CO2, but if you ask me, the important part is that it is there. Just think about it. If you are dying of thirst, will it be better to be in a desert where there is no water at all or near a sea? Of course, it's better to have salt water, which you can process into drinking water. And same goes with the atmosphere. It's just much better to have something that you can work with rather than practically have none at all, like on Mars. However, there is another big advantage of Venus compared to Mars, and it's gravity. On Venus, it's about 90% of what you experience here on Earth, whereas on Mars, it's only about 40%. And we all know that gravity is a very significant factor that affects human body, especially in the long term. It messes with our fluid circulation, our muscles, our bones, and who knows what else. Theoretically, we can make various constructions that would mimic Earth-like gravity, but it will only work inside of them. And that's pretty much all you can do in places like Mars. Even in the most optimistic scenarios of terraforming, you cannot change the gravity of a given planet. So if we're talking about long-term perspectives, and colonizing a planet is definitely a very, very long-term scenario, then instead of focusing on the ease of current solutions, we should be evaluating the best case outcome. Humans can go to its surface and stick a flag into it with the technology we have today. And flag sticking is something that we humans really like, however stupid it might look. Compared to this, reaching Venus is much harder and there is not much to do there. NASA even had a project called Havoc, which suggested a manned exploration mission in Zeppelin-like aircrafts that were supposed to float in the skies of Venus, but it would be a very hard mission to justify and get funding for. Especially if there is no flag sticking involved and no nice pictures to share on social media. So Venus is definitely not as good in short term. But let's consider a long-term scenario instead. Here the fundamental limitations of each planet come into play. Even if we somehow manage to terraform Mars, even if we somehow bring atmosphere there, which most probably will require dropping asteroids and comets onto it, as there is simply not enough material left at the moment, 
even if you somehow bring the temperature up to support liquid water, it will still be a small planet with only 40% of Earth gravity. Whereas with Venus, the atmosphere is already there. Of course, managing the runaway greenhouse effect is a hard task, but to be honest, it is much easier than bringing new material from somewhere else. And in the best case scenario, Venus can be a lot more like Earth if that's what we're going after. Of course, there will be its own issues. For example, Venus has a really slow rotation rate so that a day there lasts longer than a year. So we'll need to find all sorts of creative solutions for that. But if we're really going to be terraforming another planet, if we really want to make life interplanetary, then in the long term, Venus might be a better option than Mars. And at the very least, it is worth considering. So what do you think about it? Should we really be thinking long term and go for Venus instead of Mars? What would be your choice if you were making the decision? Let me know in the comment section. Like and share that video if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, subscribe for more, but most importantly, stay curious my friends.